Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to go through how to set up the chat aggregator application that I've uh, just released at the time of this video. Um, so, sort of the long story short on that is that I wrote a, a app that would take your uh, Discord messages from a given channel and your YouTube messages and put them all into one feed that you can then put in as like a web view in your uh, stream. So without further ado, we'll get going with this. Um, it's not difficult to do, but it does take a little bit of initial setup. Once you've done this setup once, you shouldn't have to do it again. It should all be set up for you. And um, so without further ado, we'll go through each of the steps to get you up and running. Okay, so step number one is to go and down is to clone my uh, repo from GitHub, which is obviously pretty, pretty simple. I'm sure everybody is capable of doing that. This will be a public repo when um, this video is released. Uh, so yeah, just clone that in the way you usually would. Um, so that would just be a git clone and then that URL. But I've already done that. So okay, so that's the uh, the repo downloaded. And then what you would do is you look at your directories. You see here there's two folders. The reason for that is this is a mono repo, so I've put both the sort of the front end and the it's kind of the back end. You don't actually host this, so it's not on a server, but it's like a, a locally run server. So with the repo downloaded, let's move on to the next step. So the next step, if you haven't got it already, um, is to download Node.js. Um, I, you have to have at least version 12 for this to work, but um, either 12 or 13 will do here. Um, I'll just install 13. Yeah, so just run through the installation of Node, and then when that's uh, finished, you should be able to open a terminal and uh, check your Node version. So if I just do a git bash in Windows, I should just be able to do Node V. See, I have Node installed, so the version's there. So without all those formalities out of the way, we can start to install uh, all of our dependencies and set up the project. So, so next, now that Node is installed, we can open two terminal windows at that uh, root of our uh, project. So as you can see here, we have the root of the project with two folders, and we just CD into the first folder in the first terminal, which is the client app. And then we CD into the second terminal and second app. And then just uh, in each one of those, just run npm install. And that'll install all the dependencies for you that you need. From, from Node. Okay, so they're all installed now. Um, and now that's done. The next thing you're going to need to do now is create a .n file. Now, um, I haven't included this in the project because it contains uh, sensitive keys that you should never commit to uh, version control. So if you do happen to fork this project, do not commit this file into your uh, source control. But it's just easy to create, you just put .env in your um, service project, in the in the uh, chat aggregator service folder. And and then this is where all your environment variables are going to go. So you can, yep, so that's created and you can move on to the next step. Right, so now we're getting on to installing or creating a, a application and client in Google so that you're able to uh, request uh, chat, live chat messages from your uh, YouTube account. So the way we do that is we go to console.developers.google.com and it'll take you to the screen here. And then what you do is you got this drop down here and you select new project and you give a new project a name. So you call this chat aggregator test and you go ahead and save that. Okay. What happens here as well is it doesn't always go back to the project you just created. So all you need to do is select that from a drop down up here and go to the one you just created and then go down to credentials. Now I found with this is um, this may not be immediately provisioned when you create the uh, client or create the app. So just wait a few more, uh, a few minutes if, um, if this screen doesn't appear and then just do a refresh. But once it's created, you can then create credentials. So you go up to create credentials create an auth client ID. And then when you first do this, you'll have to uh, 
set up your uh, consent screen. So you just click configure consent screen and you need to select external. Right, and then give your application a name. So that's good. And then you should be good to go with those details there. Just your uh, email address here. I've probably blurred that out in the, in the video, but that's where your email address goes. Um, you don't need to fill in any of these things here. You only need those when you want, if you want to verify an app. We're not going to do that. Okay, so your consent screen is now created. So if you go back to um, credentials and then create credentials again, uh, OAuth client ID. Now you can create your uh, credentials. So you want to select web application. You want to give this a name as well. So and uh, okay, now this is quite important. Um, for your JavaScript origins, you're going to have to put HTTP localhost colon 1234. Very important, you get that exactly right. That's for the uh, client app that you're going to be running locally to see chat messages and to connect to the chat server. Again, it's a local server host on your own machine. And for your authorized redirects, that's going to be HTTP localhost 3000 receive token. Again, that has to be very specific because that's the address of the express server that you're going to be running locally on your machine to pass your authentication code and code to uh, to the service that you're uh, creating there. So once all that's done, you can hit create, and here you get a key and secret. Um, and then what you need to do with that, open up your uh, place where you've saved your uh, .n file again. So remember when we set that uh, .n file up a few minutes ago. And uh, what you're going to want to do with that is add this. Is your YouTube underscore client underscore ID. It's all got to be in capital letters. Also your uh, YouTube underscore client underscore secret. Okay, so what you're going to want to do now is go back to your uh, .n file and add YouTube underscore client underscore ID and YouTube underscore client underscore secret in capital letters with an equals at the end. And then you'll want to copy in these uh, this client ID into here and this secret into here. Keep these um, uh, confidential. Uh, you don't want people messing around with those. Right, so you've got that in your .n file, just save that. Then go back to your console in uh, Google Developers. Go to Library and then search for YouTube Data API. Click YouTube Data API 3 and then click Enable here. Okay, now so now you should be completely set up on the back end for um, at least at Google side for uh, using this app to get chat messages. So that's good. Let's move on to Discord. Okay, so you're going to want to go to discordapp.com which is the landing page for Discord. Select Developers and then go to the Developer Portal. And here you want to create a new application. Give your application a name, so we'll call this Chat Aggregator Test. This can be any name. Okay, so we're at Chat Aggregator. And we'll want to copy that client ID there. So just copy that, make a note of it. But uh, you can come back to the copy to the client ID. So if you forget it, then um, it's, it's always there. So Okay, go to bot. You want to add a bot and confirm yes. You now have a bot. Then you want to uh, copy the bot token, so that's here. Um, keep the secret as well. Okay, so you're going to want to build a URL, and I'll show you how, what the form that it takes. So if you open a new tab here, paste in. Okay, so you're going to want to uh, create a URL, and it takes this form here. So it's https discordapp.com slash auth2 slash authorize uh, question mark parameter client ID, and then you want to enter your uh, Discord client ID here. So just to show you again where that is. Just to show you again where that is, if we go back to our general information here, you can just copy that client ID and place it there. Also the rest of the URL here is important. So it's a scope and scope equals bot and permissions equals 65536. You need to have that exact uh, number because it denotes the permissions for uh, reading chat messages and only doing that. If we hit enter here, it 
takes us to a Discord. If you haven't logged into your Discord account, it will ask you to do that. So you log into your Discord account as normal. You're able to select whichever server you want to use on Discord. And I have two test servers here, so hit continue. I do want to allow read message history, but as you can see, it doesn't allow any other permissions. It's very, uh, very lean. Um, you have to be yourself an administrator of your server to allow this bot to uh, read messages, but the, the bot itself can only read messages. So hit authorize. Okay, so that means that you've now added the bot to your uh, Discord uh, server. I'm in the server now, and you can see now that it's added that bot as a user to, to your Discord channel. So we're going to use this bloop channel that I created for this example, and uh, I can show you that it's going to work. So, so you'll also need to go back to your uh, Discord developer portal by going Discord app.com and then going to developers and then go to developer portal. We need to select your app again and go to your bot. If we go to the .end fi M file again, then we need to add some more keys. So now we need to add the uh, Discord bot token. So we put uh, Discord underscore bot underscore token equals in capital letters. And then from Discord, just copy your uh, bot token, paste that in there. Last thing we're going to need to do in terms of config is to select a channel that we want to read messages from. In this case, I'm going to use my bloop channel that I created. Create another variable called discord underscore broadcast underscore channel equals. And then we just put the name of the channel in there. And if it has spaces or, I don't know whether discord uh, has spaces or not, but if you have anything with spaces then you can always put it in quotes. But if it doesn't have any quotes, you don't need to put quotes in. So that's the config done. Um, and dusted. Everything is quite simple from here. Now, so uh, you have your two terminal windows, one pointing at your client app and one pointing at your server. And all you have to do now is run npm start in your uh, client and in your server you just have to npm start. So both of those are running now, you can see that they're running on the respective ports. Um, if you go to localhost 1234 for your uh, client and now we're at the aggregator screen and uh, the app's ready to use. So that's the end of setting it up. Um, now we're going to move on to using the app. And we want to have YouTube comments, so we have to log into Google. So we log in. And we have to log in with our email address. That makes sense. So we go and do that. and our password. And then we can choose one of our accounts to authorize the app. And I'm going to use my, I would uh, use a YouTube channel because it will have all the right permissions. Hi everyone. This is just a quick addendum to the login instructions. So when you log in for the first time using that client that you uh, created in Google developer console, um, you will get this app is verified in Chrome. Um, the reason for this is because you've created that uh, client in the console, so you own it in your account, but it isn't like it hasn't passed any kind of verification by Google. Um, so you don't need to worry about this. You're not hosting this app anywhere. You're using it for your own personal use locally, um, and you're just using um, Google as your own personal auth provider. So you don't need to worry about that. You can hit advanced and then go go to whatever the name of your app is and in brackets unsafe and then allow it and you'll never see that again but i just wanted to give you the heads up on that just in case you were concerned about using that yeah like i said you're not going to distribute this app anywhere it's literally just for your own local use so yeah that's what you just need to do for that now back to the video okay so now we're authenticated with uh, the youtube apis we can now go about retrieving a broadcast so what we can either do is get the app to automatically pick up a live broadcast that we already have started. So I'm going to do that now. If it retry connecting to active live stream, you see now we have a, we can go to the chat window and I'm actually running a live stream right now. So you see, we've got this going here. This is just a private live stream. And I can just type, hello, I am typing on my YouTube live stream 
and within 15 seconds that will appear. I've put a, a, a throttle of 15 seconds on because this does use up like API, um, you yeah, have like a, lim a rate limit per day um, of uh, requests you can make and if you make them too rapidly then it um, can stop the API. And then also if we just send a message from Discord. You see it's appeared there as well, so you've got Discord and YouTube messages. And uh, in addition to that, if you log in again, you can also specify a broadcast ID. And what this allows you to do is allows you to set all your chat up before you actually go live. So if you have an upcoming stream in, say, the uh, YouTube Studio dashboard uh, or like from the upcoming uh, stream uh, view, so for example, I have this uh, stream here. This is kind of just an old dead stream that I didn't actually delete. Um, what I can do is I can just uh, go here and you see the V parameter? You can take the value of that V parameter, paste it into here, hit the button, and it's logged me into this chat. So within 15 seconds, you'll get that. If you say hello world, within 15 seconds, there we go. And also, Yeah, so if you want to sort of pre-prepare your stream before you, uh, like, pre-prepare your chat before the stream goes live, you can do that. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to show that. Um, hopefully this has been informative and will get you up and running with the chat aggregator. Um, please do let me know if you have any comments and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. So yeah, thanks very much.